Hi, everyone. My name is Jason Sansusi, host of the Do You Know Drones podcast. I am very grateful to have today the CEO of Skyfront, Dr. Troy Messler. Troy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. We're just going to jump right into it. I have been kind of fanboying on what you guys have been doing for quite a while now. Um, I think that what you guys are doing at Skyfront is definitely pushing the industry to the next level. And we're going to dive more about that in just a minute. But first, I want to start with your 13 hour world record attempt. Was it an attempt or did you actually get the world record for this? Oh, we, we got the world record by a, a that large That is market. impressive. Very, very impressive. So what, what I'm going to do is I just want to play that video and just get uh, just so everyone can see it. If you haven't seen it, it is on YouTube, but you can also see it here. So here we go. On behalf of the entire Skyfront team, I'm excited to announce that Skyfront has once again set the world record for multi-rotor drone flight time and distance traveled. All right, brothers. See you in 13 hours. With this flight, we hope to show the world what Skyfront's hybrid electric technology can do for aviation. The Skyfront Perimeter 8 took off at 6.08 in the morning and landed at 7.12 in the evening. A total flight time of 13 hours, 3 minutes, and 57 seconds. The drone traveled a total distance of 205 miles. That's more than half the distance between San Francisco and Los Angeles. What's really shocking about this flight is that we took off before sunrise and touched down after sunset. Our drones can fly longer than most multi-million dollar manned helicopters. The Skyfront Perimeter is a hybrid electric drone that converts gasoline into electricity in flight. What sets our drone apart is that we design and manufacture every component, from the autopilot to the hybrid electric power source, to be as powerful and efficient as possible all while maintaining a lightweight design. Combined with hundreds of system-wide optimizations, the perimeter's endurance is unmatched. Man, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. It is just good stuff. So, Troy, this is your second world record attempt. So, how do you, t tell me, I mean, hey, I'd like to learn about the first one, but second, like, do you feel that these world record attempts, I mean, they're not just marketing stunts. Like this is, you're, you're out there to prove something in this industry. Like, do you see these setting you apart from your competition? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, and the reason I think that is because uh, getting a drone to fly for, for 13 hours is a really, really hard thing to do. Um, the, uh, the drone's camera actually caught the sun rising and setting in one single shot. And that's just super, super hard. It's never been done before. Uh, just to give you some context, uh, when we first started creating our hybrid drone, um, our first prototype actually only flew for three hours. Uh, and uh, you know, it took five years and hundreds of thousands of man hours from a dedicated team in order to get it to do 13 hours. Um, I think the fundamental thing that really sets us apart from uh, our competition is that our products are vertically integrated, which is basically just a fancy way of saying we create a lot of different components. Uh, we manu design and manufacture a lot of different components on the UAE. Um, and um, in anything from like the autopilot, the active rectification boards, the powertrain itself, the airframe, we do it all. And um, instead of optimizing each part in isolation, and then slapping them together, we can put the entire ensemble of parts together and optimize that, right, for power, for lightweight, and for efficiency. Um, you know, our drones are really purpose-built machines uh, that are designed to fly for a long time and fly over a long distance. Uh, we've set so uh, a number of, of different records, uh, like internally and publicly, right? And there's a lot of learning. The reason why we like doing it is not just for setting it, you know, for for whatever reason, it's really because each time we do that, leading up to a record, we learn a lot about our drone, right? And how to make it better. And we learned there's a lot of learning that goes on and we roll that back into the product. Uh, so each time we do this, the product gets better and better. And over the years, we've gained uh, an understanding of hybrid systems that's really just 
super deep and further sets us apart from the competition. So when you're pushing to get these world records, I like that, right? You got to have a, your eyes on the prize and know your why. And, and, and we'll get into that in just a second. I'm curious about your why, but like, I'm also curious. So the way that Skyfront innovates and the way that you solve challenging problems like that, I'm, I'm curious to talk about that a little bit more. So can you dive deeper? Like how does Skyfront, besides <laughs> setting world records and pushing yourself along those ways, hundreds of thousands of man hours go into this. So like, how do you do it? Tell me more about your process. Yeah. So, um, we, we really approach uh, problems from like a physics perspective. So my background is actually in physics. I um, did my PhD at Princeton, uh, got my doctorate there. And, um, you know, physics really gives you the ability to understand what's possible and what's not possible. Right. And so, you know, where to kind of focus your efforts. And, um, you know, the way we approach problems is if it makes economic sense to do something and if it's physically possible, right, through physical analysis, then we'll do it. Um, in fact, it was actually evident on the, the video itself, right? So you can actually hear one of our, our crew say, see you in 13 hours, brother. He said that to the drone, right? Uh, jokingly. And then 13 hours and four minutes later, the drone landed with the tanks dry, right? That's how like uh, precise and accurate our, our models and equations are. Um, and, um, you know, when Skyfront was first starting, there was actually like a, a very famous drone CEO who told me, um, and if I mention his name, you know who it was, but um, I won't do that. He told me that, you know, hybrid drones would never work, right? He just said, okay, okay well, right? Uh, because gas engines were too heavy. And, um, you know, but my partner and I, we really looked at, we just did a physical analysis of this and we knew otherwise. And, and here we are today. So physics really kind of gives you the ability to, um, see through and pierce through all the BS in this industry. 100% agree. Um, I'm also a physics nerd myself. Um, I got a master of engineering and astronautical engineering from University of Colorado. So I get it like rocket science is nothing but physics um, and some coding and a lot of hoping that stuff works without you actually ever get to see it. Um, so <laughs> no, I get it. Um, so yeah, no, and like right now, right. One of the big things right now is that the, the Mars Ingenuity helicopter is going to be hopefully taking off here in the next week or two. I'm pretty excited about that. Fingers crossed that that happens. That'd be fun. Not that I want that to gonna be cool. That's awesome. I, I didn't know that was cool. possible. <laughs> I had no clue, but, but it's super awesome. And like I said, they did their homework too, right? They did all the physics and they're like, you know what? We make it super light, big blades, make them go really, really fast. It should take off <laughs> if it mm -hmm. can survive the nights. <laughs> so like I said, this kind of cool stuff, a little bit of an aside, but yeah, no, I mean, so I'm now curious. So where do you see, we're a pivot. Where, where, where do you see this industry going? So this is a huge enabling, key enabling technology, right? Besides like being able to fly regulatory beyond visual line of sight, fly for hours and hours on end, carry the right payloads, which is really, as a drone scientist, kind of all I care about. Ooh, hello, light. Why, why, why are you gonna be so bright all of a sudden? And I, I, like I said, I, I really want to understand like where do you see this industry going, and what excites you about this last year and this next year of where we are going, specifically for Skyfront, but also for the industry as a whole. I would love to get your thoughts. Yeah. So um, with uh, with recent advancements to autonomy and cost and endurance. Um, the day we replace manned helicopters is really just right around the corner. And that's something that I'm personally and our team is very, you know, very passionate about, very excited about. I think we're we're all together like watching the, the aviation aviation industry transform um, in front of our eyes. And uh, you know, all that drone hype over the last 10 years is is finally uh, turning into a reality. I, I couldn't agree more. Like I see things, so I've been in this industry for a while as well. And, and I, I've definitely seen the trajectory over the last year start to really go hyperbolic. Like it is going exponential. It is, ABS I may have called it exponential, but like I really think we're hitting a point now where we're actually starting to get there. The applications, the public acceptance, it's getting a little better. There's still more that we can do and that's why that's why putting information and content out there like this is so important. We need everyone, the public, not just our industry, but the 
public to understand what is possible, how we are thinking about solving these problems. And oh, by the way, we're not out there to spy on everyone. Like we're trying to solve some real world problems, including replacing manned helicopters, not putting people out of a job. We're trying to save lives. And, and I saw in one of your interviews, oh, that, is the, that is it, right? Yeah, uh, you know, you, you look on YouTube, right? Or just Google helicopter power line crash, right? There are so many of these uh, low flying helicopters hit a power line, the whole thing just comes tumbling down. And unfortunately, people are, are killed every year uh, due to this. Um, and that's one of the things that going on man just does, does away with, right? And we save, we can save people's lives. Um, and we don't have to, to, to risk people's lives in order to save lives anymore. You, you know what I'm saying? So that's something that like is a, a fundamental tenet and uh, something that we, that, that drives us here at Skyfront. Extremely admirable. And, and like I said, from someone that's been doing this for a while and has been working in the utility inspection world for a while, seeing the battles between just internally, the large IOUs and the small, you know, municipal utilities and co-ops, they're trying to figure out how these two worlds coincide because they get massive volume from helicopters. They get, we're trying to equalize that, but this technology really does equalize that in a tangible, real way. So I think that's just something that like gets me extremely excited because I would love to see that. Like they want to use drones for distribution inspection, totally makes sense. Transmission is just going to, it's just going to the helicopters just kind of automatically. And they're dabbling into some numbers, tiny numbers for drones. I see that flopping in the next couple of years. And I am excited about that because I do believe that saving lives is a big deal because helicopters are, are big, they're noisy, they're, they're expensive, and they're, to be honest, unpredictable. Like, and they're, they're kind of hard to schedule out at volume with all the contractors that are out there. We've seen it several times, not just in California, but all over the US, that if we can switch over to this unmanned technology, it is going to have massive benefits overall. So a little bit of an aside, but I thought that was important. Yeah, it's it's safety, it's availability, and it's cost. That's, that's the promise of unmanned, and that's what we're trying to make a reality here at Skyfront. And I love that. I think that's fantastic. And I, I push you on your journey. I really want to see you guys. I mean, you guys are internally motivated. I love that the industry needs this. So uh, keep on keeping on, brother. But let's let's get to this last question. So I'm curious. So like, but there are going to be challenges and roadblocks along the way. Absolutely. Like there, there have to be. But like where there are challenges and roadblocks, there are opportunities. COVID, if anything, has shown that there are opportunities and it has pushed the drone industry to a level where it was not before, where do you see the challenges and opportunities for the industry over the next few years? Well, um, yeah, so the, the challenges and opportunities, are, to me, they're the same thing, right? Um, the challenges are, are still today, the major limitation is is regulation. Um, you know, we have uh, beyond, in, in particular, beyond visual line of sight uh, restrictions. Having a drone that can fly for five hours and you know transmit video up to 30 miles away, that's awesome. But if you can't legally fly it, then what is the point, right? Um, so th the great news is that uh, we actually make our drones what we call BB loss compliant, right? So, and what I mean by that is that we have a feature called command and control handoff that allows multiple pilots to control a single UAV over a large area, right? So they can they can basically request control and they can pass control to any pilot in a very seamless way simply by flicking a switch on a remote control. Um, and uh, in this way, the drone can fly beyond visual line of sight of the original pilot, but it's still always within line of sight of a pilot in the crew, as long as that pilot is within radio line of sight of the aircraft. And this is a great way of not violating the FAA's BB loss missions or restrictions, excuse me, but still utilizing the extreme endurance and and extreme range of the aircraft and being able to um, to do things like power line inspection, uh, uh, pipeline inspections, right away surveys, 
in a seamless way um, at scale, right? One of the, the issues with, with drones today is like, if you have to remain within line of sight, you have to send the drone out, you know, in a kilometer, kilometer way, it's going to land and you got to go out there and you got to do it again, right? It, from a labor perspective and from a, a uh, you know, pain perspective, that doesn't make a ton of sense. So no. we, we give, we give our, uh, we give our customers the tools they need in order to fully utilize the, the extreme endurance of the vehicle so they can go and they can scale their operations properly. I agree. I think that challenges are opportunities. And I think BV loss is a challenge, but you're right. It's an opportunity. We want, we need to be able to stay here. And, and here's the, here's the reality. The reality is we are a worldwide industry. This is international. We don't have the same issues in other countries. So as a matter of fact, like, you know, the amount of research and things that we've done over the past several years, like the United States is pretty behind a, a couple of different countries um, in this particular aspect, in many aspects, if I'm being honest, but we have a massive innovation drive and, and we are world leaders. So it's, it's just, it's on us to continue to push for the right regulations at the right time, but continue to work within the constraints that we have and make it work, right? So that's never gonna stop us. Technology is not the issue. Technology is there and it's continually getting better exponentially, which is fantastic. We were, you weren't the same place last year as you are today. So that's a huge thing that I want everyone to know that we are moving forward at a very rapid pace and it, it's just going to unlock more gates and more gates as we move along, as you know, regulatory acceptance and public acceptance sort of trend in the right direction, which I believe they are now, that I think it's gonna be a really fun, brave new world that we're gonna see here in the next three to five years. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. And I think the FAA has made a lot of progress, um, you know, towards uh, beyond visual line of sight flight like fully beyond visual line of sight, aside from whatever we've built, you know, with the command and control handoff. Um, and, uh, you know, we see more and more companies now getting waivers to fly beyond visual line of sight. They've streamlined the process in, in, in some ways. Um, and so we're, we're really looking forward to that. And, um, you know, I, I really do think uh, the, the day when drones are gonna be flying autonomously over the horizon, that's really right around the corner. We're at a, we have a great vantage point right now. I mean, we're, we're seeing this industry just totally transform. It's kind of fun where we're sitting. It, it Just being in the industry for as long as we have, it's just fun to see where it's come from to in a very short amount of time where we are today. And I'm just so excited to see where we're going tomorrow for not just me, but for my students, my children. Like I want to see this for them just because they're excited about it today. They love this technology and they just really don't understand, at least not yet, that this these are not just toys. This is, revol these are revolutionizing the world. I see drones, and I've always said, they're fun flying ham sandwiches that carry really cool sensors. Their why <laughs> is to be able to do that, right? And they are, right? And someone, someone years ago told me that, right? They're flying ham sandwiches. And I'm like, I'm using that every chance I get because they are, right? <laughs> We don't really care about what the drone necessarily is, right? But if it can complete the mission safely, more effectively, both time and cost effectively and save life, like if you can do all of those things, winner, right? Fantastic. I'm all about it. So yeah, I really awesome. think that that we're like, uh, you know, that, that this period in the drone industry is very similar to the period in like 1995, 1996 with the internet, you know? people kind of heard about the internet back then they, you know they started seeing like web addresses on on coke cans and on just you know on, on commercials but they didn't really know like why it was it's was useful it was only until a few years later and then it became clear it's like oh wow this is really changing everything we're doing and i think it's the same thing in the drone industry right now we're really on the cusp of that um, where people are, are finally starting to see the true utility of this technology 100% agree. This is going to be fun. I, I'm excited to see Skyfront where you are a year from now. We should chat again. I would love to do that. Absolutely. And just keep tabs, 16 right? Hours. 16 hours. <laughs> 36 hours. I'm just calling it. I'm just calling it. I don't know. I'm not going to like bet any Bitcoin on it, but eh, you know. <laughs> I, Troy, thank you so much. This has been 
very insightful and eye-opening. I love your mission. I want to see what this technology can do a year from now, five years from now. It's going to propel us to a place that we can't even imagine right now. But we're the dreamers. We're the innovators. We're the people that are out there pushing the envelope every day. And we're excited about it. So uh, I just want to thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And I uh, look forward to chatting again. My pleasure, Jason. Thank you for having me.